Good morning, Grace Chapel. I'm Todd, and this is Dave. We're going to continue on with our reading in Ephesians chapter three, or 4, verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of their blindness of their heart, who, being past feelings, have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But you who have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, put away lying, let each one of you speak truth with your neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ has forgave you. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's like probably four sermons. If <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. So it looks like uh, first he's talking about the old self and how the Gentiles, which we would say the unsaved nowadays, live and how we all used to live in our darkness of thinking. Then he goes on to talk about the new self and how now that we're saved, we have we put on a new self. And then it looks like he uh, goes into um, kind of conduct, now that you're a new self, how you should live, and then uh, talks about, uh, yeah, how this benefits the body. So it kind of goes back to previous sections in chapter four about unity in the body. So uh, yeah, I have the, I for years have read the New King James. I know I'm kind of switching over to that's the ESV now because I know that's what um, we use here at Grace. So I'm, it's interesting. I've studied all this in the ESV and now I'm reading it in the New King James here and it's, I like some of the things in the New King James, but um yeah, uh, I love this whole concept of putting off the old self, how it's not like a one-time thing. I mean, it is in a sense when you get saved, you have to repent and turn, but you can't just throw off the old self and then never put on anything else. This is cool how, you know, when you read a, a chapter, like if you're having a quiet time, you're reading one chapter, I forget that this is actually a flow mm -hmm. that's been having, that's been going on in previous chapters. And the thing that I liked about this section here is that there's two therefores in here. Mm. And you know, when you see a therefore... You have to ask, what is it therefore? <laughs> exactly. What is the therefore, therefore? And so he starts right off with therefore. And so I was thinking about this passage and was thinking that, you know, in Ephesians 1 through 3, 1 through 3, he's really talking about the spiritual privileges that God's given us. And then last in chapter 3, we learned about being unified. Mm -hmm. And now he says, therefore. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, since you have this spiritual um, gifting, and I'm asking you to be unified, I'm now put on the new self. Yes. So now we know what the therefore is there for. Exactly. And I like to think of it like um, as putting off the old self as like, you know, you ever go to a picnic and you're like, get your hamburger and your fries and your beans and you're all sitting down and then a fly comes over and lands on your burger and you're like, get out of here. And then you're like taking a bite and he keeps coming back and you get out yeah. of here, get out of here. You're just a fly. And it's like... That's what I think of our old self. We have to continually be like, get out of here, get out of here, you know, like, because, you know, when I first got saved, I, I was still doing drugs for a few months after I got saved. And it, and I kept having to like, be like, oh, wow, I'm like, I kept having to put off that old self. And it wasn't just a, a one for me. Some people can get, just get instantly, miraculously delivered of everything. For me, it was definitely a process. And I kept having to, and still to this day, but, you know, back then, I was doing all kinds of outward sins, you know, but now um, people don't see my sins. They're all inward, like, you know, uh, greed and envy and lust and right. pride and those kind of things. So I, you know, you look all clean on the inside, on the outside, but I'm continually having to throw off those, those things that God 
brings to mind every time they happen. The good thing is you don't have to do it by yourself. Exactly. You, know, when you read through this, it's like, don't do this anymore. Be a new man. But then he, he reminds us that um, down in, in verse 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mm-hmm. You know, the Holy Spirit's going to guide us. Just like what he said in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, that you know we are new creatures in Christ. Mm-hmm. We're different. We have the power that God's given within us to change. So it's not like I have to try to do this myself and fail and try myself and fail, but I've got the power of the Holy Spirit to help me. Exactly. Yeah, and we've been given a new identity. That's kind of the whole yeah, exactly. thing is um, where he does kind of get into the identity. You are a new creation, and, you know, I... I will say this every chance I get. I'll anytime someone talks about identity or identity even creeps up. I like to talk about the fact that we are sons and daughters of the King of Kings, the King Amen. of the Universe, and we are His children. And so He could like you know zap us just like that, but we we get to go up and sit on His lap. Like imagine just a king who has this huge kingdom, and he rules and he cuts people's heads off and all this stuff. But we get to come in and say, "Daddy," and jump on His lap. And that, to me, that's like, um, that's what our identity in Christ is like. We uh, just going from dark to light. Son of the King. Yep. And this, I think that's a good point, which you brought up. This isn't just trying to change bad behavior. Mm -hmm. It's really trying to walk in the identity that Christ gave us. Right. I like to think of myself as a son Mm -hmm. uh, standing before my father. You know, I'm not a slave and I'm not groveling before him. I'm, I'm coming to him as his, his beloved son, that he allows me into his presence and I can speak freely with him. Exactly. So I can need to walk in that identity. Yeah, and that's, I think that's where the old self creeps in is we don't walk in that identity. We, we forget who we are, and I think it's so important to uh, just remember who we are. Otherwise, that old self, we, we turn back to it, I guess. I guess if we don't find our fulfillment in God, kind of like an addict, you know, they don't find their fulfillment or trouble comes and they turn to their addiction, well... If you know we're having a hard day or whatever, we're not full of the spirit. We're not looking to God. We will turn to those old ways because mm-hmm. those are the That's familiar right. things that give us comfort. I was uh, talking with Noah earlier, and I had written in my Bible, "Stop it!" <laughs> oh, yeah, with it. an exclamation point, <laughs> and I just remembered why I wrote that. Yeah. Um, do you remember the Bob Newhart video? The Bob yes, Newhart video. I love that video. For those of you who don't know, it's uh, Bob Newhart's acting counselor, and he has this woman come in, and she's got a problem that she has this fear of being uh, buried alive in a of box. Of being buried alive. You remember it well. Yeah. Yeah. And she also is uh, afraid of walls, anything where she's confined. He, so, he says to her, um, so you're claustrophobic? And he, she says, yeah, I guess you could say that. He says, well, I've got two words for you. Mm-hmm. I just, two words. She goes, Should I write them down? He goes, no, it's just two words. Stop it! <laughs> but I, you know, God's not just telling us to stop it. Yeah. But for some reason, I wrote that in my Bible. No, I think, I mean, I really do think that uh, obviously we don't have the power, but God has given us the power to sometimes just be like, no. Like like I say with the fly and the burger, get out of here. That's right. Get out of here. Stop it. Yeah. Um, God, we have that power. And a more spiritual way of saying it, you know, in James, he tells us that, you know, it, to you can tell the devil to flee and mm-hmm. he will go. Mm-hmm. You know? And we've got the power to, to send the Satan away. He doesn't have to be messing with us. Yeah. We have the power to do that through the Holy Spirit, Yeah, which is what you're saying. I wrote down in, in my notes um, on this passage um, that we can, turn, we can turn away from the old self, but if we don't turn to our new self, that, to me, that's re- so religion. I define religion as turning away from the bad, but not turning away towards God. Right. So if we just turn away from our old self, and we don't turn to our new self, that's just religion. I mean, it's not Christianity or a relationship with God. It's almost like you're taking off your old clothes, but you're not putting on new clothes. You're naked, <laughs> you know? And no, we don't want to walk around naked. We want to walk around with our righteous robes. We don't want to walk around with the filthy rags right. of unrighteousness, but we want to walk around with the ra- righteous robe, but we don't want to be naked. Naked, Being naked is religion. That That's a good point. I yeah. didn't actually think of that. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, the next section here goes into do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm. Do you have any... Uh, there's another therefore. Oh, therefore. Yeah. So do you okay. have any thoughts on that section? I love thinking about that because, man, I, I'm... One of the things, you know, like I said, all... And I shouldn't say all of my sins, but, you know, the majority of my sins are all are inward. I'm sure yours too. We're not stealing and robbing and, you know, I don't, even, I don't even swear. You know, I don't even let any... I don't curse. And so I'm, I'm greedy. I'm pride. I'm you know, yeah. fleshly. I'm selfish. And... um. And so 
I'm constantly saying, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry for grieving you. Well, which to me is not just doing those things, but it's when God, when the Holy Spirit tells you to do something and you don't do it, or if the Holy Spirit tells you not to do something and you do it. Yeah. It's disobedience. Disobedience to me is pretty much grieving the Holy Spirit. I, I would agree. You know, you know, being in the accounting background, I go to the, the numbers and I, th- I was struck in this section where he says, you know, to, if you steal, no, don't steal any longer, but work. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, well, that's, that's good advice. But then he tells us exactly what we're working for. Mm. Uh, working with your hands is good that you may have something to give, who, for so, give to those who have need. And mm-hmm. I thought, boy, that's the first thing you want to be thinking about is where can this money be used for for his glory? Yes. And I thought, that's not the way I necessarily think. I think about saving and, and about paying the bills and that, and right. you know, having. And mm-hmm. here he's saying, no, no, you, it's good to work, but let's work so that you can bless others. Yeah, and that that's what I find that whole last paragraph starting in 29 is it goes back to unity in the body of Christ. It goes back right. to the body. Everything in this section that's true. is talking about... Um, like it says, you know, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, uh, just as in Christ, God forgave you. And he talks a few other places in here. So it go, everything goes back to, yeah, like you just said, we're we're building up the body. It's not just about us. We're trying to do what's good for the whole body of Christ. Every word that comes out of your mouth, mm-hmm. boy, tame that tongue and you, and think about mm-hmm. how can I build somebody up right. with the words that I that I'm choosing to say. You see, right, building up the body, not tearing it down. Which is really like, I mean, the goal of our faith is to be conformed to the image of Christ and to glorify Him, but building up the body is, I would say, the secondary, the goal, because that's, I don't know, I just keep thinking about how we are, I think about marriage a lot, too, like, whenever, you know, every marriage argues, and when I sometimes think about what I'm arguing with my wife, like, she's a member of the body of Christ, right? and I'm like, and I'm arguing with Christ right now, <laughs> like, I'm... I'm getting up. I'm getting upset at the body of Christ. So I think it's helpful to realize, like the interactions we have with each sure. other, whatever we do to one another or do, or don't do to one another, we are doing or not doing to Christ. You're right. We're all to work together in unity mm-hmm. for the common good. Yeah, as the body. Right. And I love the way he ends it, which couldn't be better. Just remembering that we need to be tender-hearted, forgiving, mm-hmm. and above all, remember that Christ forgave us. Yeah. You know that's that's. He forgave us, so certainly we should be forgiving others and be a little more patient. Amen to that. Yeah. How can you build up somebody around you, a fellow believer? What can you do to build them up in Christ? To uh, keeping in mind that we're all members of one body, what can you do to strengthen another part of the body? That's a great question because mm-hmm. you know God tells us to consider how to build each other up in love and good deeds. So right. that's a, that's a great one. Yeah. Now, if you're looking for me to have the second one, we might have to think a little bit okay. here. Okay. Um, how about... Um, I mean, we can always talk about what are the struggles with putting off the old self? How do you exactly. live the life that God intended mm-hmm. you to live? Great. What do you great. So those, those are two great questions to discuss <laughs> in your life group with your friends. You know, these questions aren't just for your life group. I think like Rob talks about, discuss these with your kids. Um, talk about these with your children and, and say, hey, I saw this life group video. We've been talking about this in small group. What do you think? Because um, I really like Rob and David's um, focus on trying to get the family more um, involved in that's good. Things, so, thank you.